Welcome to the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum here in Cooperstown, New York. My name is Craig Muter. I'm the Director of Communications of the Hall of Fame, and I'm here with Tim Wiles, our Director of Research, and we are on the way to the A. Bartlett Giamatti Research Center here at the Hall of Fame. Now, the Research Center and the library makes the connection of how this game connects with American culture, Tim, and I think you're going to share some, some items with us today from the library. Absolutely. Well, first of all, Craig, a lot of visitors to the Hall of Fame don't even realize that we do have a library. It's sort of all the way at one end of the building here. But not only do we have a library, but it's one of the nation's great repositories on any single subject. We've got about three million items related to baseball up in the library that anyone can use. Those items range from everything from uh, movies, fiction, poetry, literature, children's books, files of clippings on every player who's ever played Major League Baseball, over half a million photographs, 12,000 hours of audio and video. So you name it, if it tells you about baseball, whether it's the actual game on the field or the way that artists and writers have imagined it, we try to have it in our library. Well, you mentioned poetry. April is National Poetry Month, and we have some very famous poems that are here in the library, not only as documents, but really as living poetry. Absolutely. There are tons and tons and tons, thousands of poems in the library. Think of baseball's sad lexicon, which people know as Tinker to Evers to Chance. Uh, think of the poem that the uh, Yankee teammates of Lou Gehrig inscribed on his trophy in 1939. Uh, think of the manuscript to take me out to the ball game. Not exactly a poem, but pretty close to one when you know the full lyrics of that song. The greatest poem of them all, however, is one that quite a few of our viewers will be familiar with. Casey at the Bat, written by Ernest Lawrence Thayer in 1888. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to that hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could but get a whack at that, they'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon this stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, he tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted, and they saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a hug and third. Then from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled in the valley, it rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride on Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt, twas Casey at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 5,000 tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air. But Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him. Kill the umpire, shouted someone on the stand, and it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! 
fraud, cried the maddened thousands, and Echo answered, fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. Somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. Thank you.